Hello everyone, Purple Bandidos, and welcome back to more Let's Play Pokemon White 2. I'm Purple Rodri. Last time we took on Team Plasma Colrus, and after a very, very tough fight, we were told that we are getting ready for a couple more fights here on the left side of the ship. Now, as you can see, this guy seems to be letting us through just because we beat Colrus, so he must be a very, very important person if, you know, he's got all this power to control the guys and all that's going on, and who knows? And whoa! Who is that? That blasted Colrus. The fool is far too committed to pure science. This is how he repays me for making him the boss of Team Plasma? How dare he put his personal intellectual curiosity before our ultimate mission of conquering Unova? How fortunate for you, if you get to be the sole audience member for one of my speeches. Team Plasma will use its knowledge and technology to take Kyrum's true power to its absolute limit and freeze the Unova region. The terrified people in Pokemon will bow at Team Plasma's. No, at my feet! Kyrum is an empty being, the remnants of a certain Pokemon when it split into Reshiram and Zekrom. My desire is the absolute rule of Unova. That's right, Kyrum will be the vessel into which my desires will be poured. Look against us! Kyrum has been transferred! It's finally here! The wonderful era in which I am the absolute ruler of Unova has finally arrived! I'll let you take care of this! Wait! You're one of the Shadow Triad, right? Tell me about the purloin that was stolen in Aspersia! Very well! This might be it! I stole this Pokemon five years ago in Aspersia! So it seems likely that it is the Pokemon you're talking about, but now it only listens to my commands, such as the fate of Pokemon that are trapped in Pokeballs. What? Don't mess with me, that's someone else's Pokemon! Ah, I feel sorry for Pokemon! They're ruled by Pokeballs and the whims of their trainers! Lord Getsa spoke of Pokemon Liberation two years ago simply for his own ambitions, but if his plans had succeeded, many Pokemon would have been saved. This is Leopard, well, you knew as a Purloin if it had been released, it might have returned to you. Well then... You there, I won't let you interfere with Lord Getsa's plans! All right, guys, so it looks like we're going to be taking on the Shadow Triad here. Uh, this is the beginning of something crazy. I think we're going to have a tough time. We are challenged by Team Plasma Shadow. He's going to send out Ponyard. I'm going to go ahead and open up with Barky, if I'm correct. Now, if you guys remember, after Colrus's fight, our team was actually a little bit weakened. Well, we were actually pretty dang weakened. Uh, so I went ahead, healed him up. I just used some of the revives we had and things like that. And I think our team will be pretty much good to go. Uh, coming up on everything that it has to. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. I've been jam-packed with stuff lately. Um, I do want to tell you guys that I finally, finally, finally had the chance to go to Halloween Horror Nights. And I must say that it was absolutely amazing. It was one of the most fun times I've had in a long time. Um, I actually went and it was around 8 p.m. Uh, with a group of friends. And I thought I was going to be really scared. I really did. Uh, just because, you know... I, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of the paranormal stuff. I already told you guys stuff about that. But going to the actual park, um, you walk in and, you know, you get a little bit of chills. And you're like, oh, okay, like, here we go. It begins. And, oh, my gosh, did we just get critted? I think we almost did. And it's just, it's a really creepy atmosphere, right? Like, you're walking around. And, and the theme for this year is The Walking Dead. So you have, like, zombies jumping out at you and things like that. And, and things are going crazy. Um, and like as soon as you walk in, you start seeing them. And the creepiest part is that it's so late at night. Come on, come on, Barky. Come on, Barky. Come on, Barky. Yeah! It's so late at night that you don't know if the person next to you is a zombie or not. So like you're just walking by and you'll randomly look to the left and it's like, Oh, crap, that's a zombie. Like that's what happens. And it's, it's so fun. Um, I just had a really great time with it. I actually have a, a couple good stories here. You're not done yet. Okay, it looks like we'll be taking on... The second uh, Shadow Triad member. I'll continue with my stories. So we walk in immediately. Like, uh, you know, the, some people I'm with are getting scared. and Zombies are running around, all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, so let's hit up a house. Um, I don't remember which... which th the first house we hit was Evil Dead. Now, I've never seen this movie. But I knew that it was going to be pretty creepy. Um, so I was kind of prepared for that. So we go in. The line takes like 80 freaking minutes. If you guys have ever gone to Halloween Horror Nights, the lines are absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. It was like a 70 minute 80 minute wait like yeah, it sucks. It sucks having to wait in line I'm pretty impatient. I'm kind of an impatient person. So for me. I was kind of like I don't I don't really want to wait this long I, But you know I did it whatever and it paid off so we go into the house and this was my first Time at Halloween Horror Nights, right? So like I've never experienced this before I've never been through it um, So I was just kind of excited to get into it and, and see what happens. Oh Barky really went down. That kind of sucks. 
Uh, I'm gonna send out Mur- uh, I'll send out Nagini. Let's send out Nagini. So then, we walk into the evil dead house, and then immediately it's like super dark, it's chilly, things are going crazy, like, uh, you know, I went with this girl and she was like holding my hand and like, it, it, like, gripping on, like not letting go, and honestly, I was walking through it and the whole time I was just thinking, hey, this isn't that bad. Like, there were a couple jump scares, but honestly, yeah, like, you kind of expect where they're coming from after a while. You just like, you know, if you see a wall or like a chest or like a barrel or something, you just expect the jump and if you expect it, you're fine. And it wasn't that bad. I mean, I guess the costumes were kind of creepy and the way people dressed and things like that. But overall, it's not that bad. If you've ever wanted to go, I highly recommend it. It was really fun and honestly, I don't think if you if you're expecting it, I don't think you can get that scared. I had a fun time. It was a blast. Like there were moments when I did get a little bit creeped out. Like um there were a couple other houses. Um the one that I probably had the most fun with. So there are like six houses. They're like Walking Dead, there's Evil Dead, there's uh Resident Evil, um there's La Llorona, um and um a bunch of other ones. There's a werewolf one, um, and then uh, cabin in the woods. So those are all the houses right there. So the only ones I didn't get to do were Resident Evil and the Walking Dead ones. Uh, the Walking Dead one was actually an ET. So if you guys are ever going to ET and Universal here in Orlando, imagine a bunch of zombies in that foresty area. I kind of wanted to do it, but the line was too long. My friend said like it probably wouldn't have been too worth it. So I was like, all right, whatever. Like we'll do it next time. It's all good. No big deal. Um, you know, it was, it was whatever, but, um, the one that I, I really liked the most was La Llorona. Um, if you guys have heard that story, it's kind of like, I know it's a, it's a Hispanic story. Um, I know it's kind of popular in Latin America. It's about this woman who, like, uh, like, drowned her kids or something. So then she goes around and she finds, like, women with babies and then, like, kills them and steals the babies. I know, it's kind of creepy. Uh, actually really, really creepy, but they made a, 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 a house of it at Universal. And I had to tell you, that was one of the creepiest ones. Um, because there was especially this one part where you're walking down this little bridge and you look up and there's this woman in a veil and you're just like ah in a veil this is so creepy but it was it was so fun um i honestly had a blast i definitely want to go again and try out the resident evil house um raccoon city i think it was which i didn't get the chance to go through and then uh also try out the walking dead okay we defeated the shadow triad that was actually quite quite easy even if i lose lord gets us simply has to win no matter. The only thing you can do is watch Lord Getsis use Kyrum to freeze you of a solid. That's all. You, I'll return this Pokemon to you. Considering what Lord Getsis is about to do, I have no further need of it. Hey, Rodri. If we let Team Plasma do whatever they want, there'll be more sad like Pearl Pokemon like Purloin and Kyrum. Oh, look! We found the Purloin! Grrr! Yeah! Alright, let's keep on moving then and see what else we have in store for us. It seems like we're making our way through, we're doing some good work, and I'm kind of excited to see um, what's coming up for us now, because it seems like there's a lot going on with Getsis, which we haven't seen in a very long time, so it's kind of weird that we are finally getting to see him here. Now we know that he is the ultimate evil of Team Plasma, once again, I didn't think Colrus was, um, just didn't really see it that way. All right, guys, so it's time for us to head inside of this cave, and I think something very, very important is coming up. Let me check how our team's doing, because um, I'm actually a little bit nervous for this. It seems like Barky is up in front, ready to go. So let's go ahead and walk right in. Or not. We we bumped into a Pokemon. That That's nice. Uh, that was nice. Uh, did not plan that. Did not expect there to be Pokemon in here, guys. Uh, I guess we're just going to run away from this Sneasel. I, <laughs> once in a while, moments happen like this. You never know. And let's walk in now. The giant chasm. This is the spot where Kyrum's power resonates. Here, Kyrum can use the full extent of its power and easily cover all of Unova in ice. Kyrum, come! I have a memory that has continued to haunt me. Just one. That unpleasant look in your eyes reminds me of it. That aside, this is my gift to you to show my respect for making it this far. I'll freeze you solid right here so you can watch my glorious ascent. Kyrum, glaciate! <laughs> R 
Pressure him! Fuse and flare! So you came! The freak without a human heart! N! Reshiram told me Kyrum is suffering. I can't allow selfish humans to make Pokemon suffer. And I like Unova. It's the place that taught me how to live as a human. It's the place that made me notice the harmony between Pokemon and humans living together. I will protect the Pokemon and humans who live here. Excellent! That was a moving expression of your determination. So the education I provided to make you king wasn't a complete waste then. But I still haven't forgot that even though I was kind enough to find you when you were living in the forest with Pokemon and take you in and care for you and then you were selfish and disrupted my plans, I was supposed to use your abilities to rule Unova! But I'll forgive you for that as well. Reshiram, which you were kind enough to bring with you, can melt ice. Now you've saved me the work of searching for it. Well, actually, I knew you'd appear if we fired ice missiles into Opelousan City and you noticed the change. That's an ugly formula. It won't work. Oh, but it will. If I use these... The DNA Splicers! Reshiram! Kyrum, absorb Reshiram. Use Abso Fusion. I never would have believed that Pokemon could fuse together that there was a formula like this. You fool. Last time I was going to use you to capture people's hearts and minds to rule them, but this time I'm simply going to use overwhelming power and rule with an iron fist. Do you understand? If you had simply become King Unova, would have remained beautiful. Come now, trainer. This time, no one will save you. But to make things interesting, I'll give you a chance. Let's see if you can stop this, Kyrum. What's this? Your Pokeballs are trembling. Could your Pokemon be shaking with rage? No, that's not possible. Simple tools don't have emotion or thought. Come, challenge Kyrum. Just so you know, catching it is impossible. My cane emits signal that disrupt the function of all Pokeballs. All right, guys, so it seems like the time is here. We're going to go ahead and take on Kyrum. Here we go, Rock Free versus Kyrum. It's time to take him on, guys. Uh, looks like we are ready. Kyrum has appeared. It is level 55 and has... 
gets to Z, there is no way for us to catch it. So the only thing we can do right now is defeat it. And that's what I'm going to be aiming for, guys. Let's hope that we can do it. I'm going to go with the Outrage. I think it's great that we have Barky up in front um, because it will help us out a little bit that we have a Dragon-type move that will be super effective on it. Now, only this isn't only Kyrum. This is White Kyrum, if I'm correct, uh, because Reshiram has somehow fused with Kyrum. I... I don't even know what just happened. The DNA splices work. That was pretty easy. Kyrum is down. And now, guys, with that, it seems like we've gained a ton of XP. And that there's a lot more coming up uh, than we know. So with that, guys, we are ready to continue on from next time. Because next time, guys, I am pretty sure we are ready to take on the true evil behind Team Plasma. So if you guys have any tips, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.